On today's episode, we cut some aluminum. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of B is for Build. In today's episode, we are building a dashboard. This car has no windshield and it's got a pretty unique hood situation. So we gotta build a very unique dashboard that's gonna fit uh, this vehicle so we can start jam packing electronics into it. We're gonna have a 11 inch Holly display for the ECU. We have a 12 inch Garmin GPS that's gonna be showing us around the track and where we need to go. And I think we're gonna have, oh, we have another dashboard, a little small guy for the driver, all sorts of great stuff. I'll tell you all about it and we're gonna build a dashboard. Stay tuned. First thing you're probably gonna notice, we have moved the car. The car is now horizontal in the shop, or I don't know, it's running long ways with the shop. We uh, had a lot of boat engine work stuff that was going on back here. We kind of tucked that away and got the car in here sideways. It's gonna make it a lot easier for us all to work on it at the same time. So we gotta build a dashboard. Dashboard has gotta go, has to go minimum from about here-ish, somewhere around here, to that bar right there. That's our dash bar that the steering wheel comes off of. It's gotta get there somewhere, and we honestly haven't picked out how. We've been talking over a bunch of different ways, but we haven't really decided one way or another. I think the best way to do that is gonna to be to virtualize it and to build it in 3D space so we can try a lot of different dashboard options really quickly and see the option that we like best. So let me show you this new technology that we got. So this is the new iPhone 12 Pro and it has infrared, I believe, that allows it to do 3D scans. They're not super detailed. They go down to five millimeter detailing. Um, and I bought this phone to try this out and I found out it was really cool. So I actually ordered a 3D scanner that's yet to arrive that goes down to 0.3 millimeter of detail so we can do real, real accurate stuff. But this is gonna be a cool way to virtualize stuff. So uh, I got this app, it's called 3D Scanner App. It's just some free app on the App Store. Um, I set up all the settings to do the most precise model that it can do. And I throw my feet in here to emulate kind of where we're gonna be sitting as the driver. And then you just hit record and stuff's gonna start turning purple on my screen, and that's all the stuff that it's kind of capturing in 3D. So I'm gonna go around the cockpit here and just capture all of this stuff that I think we need. This bar is really important. I don't wanna stick my hand in there. This bar is really, really important um, for our 3D model. And then this front part of the dash coming out here is also really important. So that tells us where the end of the dash is. Runs up to that. We already have that. Okay, so now looking through here on my phone, it looks looks like I've got enough of a model. And so what it did was it captured images and shapes, polygons. There's 234,000 vertices and 490,000 faces, which is a pretty detailed 3D model. And right now it's processing the images onto the model. And what it's gonna show you in a second here is our cockpit. And there's our cockpit in 3D. So you can see how I said it's rough. It's only down to uh, five millimeters of detail, but it tells us where absolutely everything is to a detail enough that we can actually visualize some stuff. So let's go ahead, and this is a valid 3D model. It's a good to go 3D model. So let's go ahead and throw this into my computer and start to work with it and see what we, uh, see what we like from the driver's point of view as far as the dashboard goes. All right, so we got this 3D model in my computer and I'm trying to get to the perspective of the driver. So this might be a little cock like that. This is about what it looks like from inside the car. Maybe, I don't know, we might be a little bit higher. Yeah, something about like that is uh, is what it looks like inside the car. Now this, this model is really messy, so building off of it is, you know, not gonna be that fun. What I'm gonna go ahead and do first thing is a little bit of cleanup work. I'm basically gonna use cylindrical tubes to replace the tubes that actually matter in this design. Uh, so it'll just look a little bit cleaner and I think we're gonna get a better idea of what we're trying to build here.
All right, so I kind of came in and replicated a lot of the tubing around the areas where it looked like the model was rendering the tubing the best I could and also from memory. And then I also, this green part is uh, the dash where the actual metal that the dashboard kind of bolted into, the, the stock Lamborghini uh, dashboard bolted into. So I got that all replicated. Um, and I do feel like this is very much representative of the view. We're a little bit zoomed out now, but if I zoom in just a little bit more, kind of changing the perspective, uh, this is a this is very much what it feels like sitting inside the cockpit, um, give or take a little bit of up or down, depending on where you have your head. But I know you can definitely see the dash, and you can see a little bit of this bar, and you can definitely see that bar. So this is kind of what it feels like to sit inside the car now. Like I said, this model is very messy, so if I take it away, our virtualized area gets a lot cleaner, and it gets a lot easier for me to decide kind of what we want to build. One thing that I found in the model and in the car that was really important is there's a peak right here where this is all flat. This whole surface right here is all flat, and then there's a peak right here, and it starts going down until it hits our bar here. So we're really worried, like we're really working between this section here and this bar right here. So now. I can go ahead and virtualize some, I might connect some of these bars up because they're just a little, it's a little hard to imagine what's going on, but um, I can go ahead and visualize a few different options of dashboard. So that's really what we're here to do. Uh, now that this is like the right space and everything's the right geometry, I want to test out building some dashboards and see what one I like the best. All right, I built a couple dashboard options and I wanted to show you guys them virtualized. So this, pretend this viewpoint that we see right here, this is about driver's point of view, although it's, you know, a little bit more to the side. But, um, so, uh, let's see, I added this guy. This is the size of the Holly EFI Pro Dash, which we have, and it's, that is a centered dash piece, so it's probably gonna go right here. Reason being, if we move it up here to be above the bar, it starts to block our viewport, uh, viewpoint. So I'm thinking down here is a little bit better. So let's see, dash one. Uh, it was an idea that we had where we are going to use three pieces. Now, um, if I move the perspective around, it's going to mess stuff up, but I, I got to show you. So the one piece, building one piece of aluminum this size is impossible to get into the car because of car pieces that are out here and out here and stuff like that. So it was going to be three pieces all butted up next to each other with a flat part in the middle. So that part's flat and then these parts slope down. Um, the thing that I'm most worried about doing something like this is if there is any imperfections where they meet up or anything, where they butt up together, it's gonna be very visible and I think it's gonna look really bad. So that's what I was worried about about dash one. Um, dash two, the thought came in to put a tube right here at the high point there's a high point right here where this is all flat and then there's this is the high point and then it starts going down. So put a tube in there and then Oscar came up with this idea to do two pieces. So over here would be one piece and there'd be a seam in the middle right under this little unit here and then a piece over here going this way. And uh, I really like this. The only issue that I had with it is we have no reason to have this bump here in the middle. There's, there's nothing that really fits there that would go there. Our Holly EFI uh, Pro Dash is much, much too large to fit in there. If we were to move this up to look at it, it's just, it's way too big. So that's not gonna fit in there. Um, and uh, so that's the only problem there. And that seam really has to, pretty much has to be there. Actually, we could move the seam over, which leads me to Dash 3 concept the green dash. So this is built a little bit differently because it's a solid piece. Um, in the lower piece section that can be slotted in. It rests on the tube underneath, the cylinder underneath. Solid piece right here that goes across and a solid piece up here that goes across. So this is one piece, this is one piece. And then we have the guy in the middle. This guy, so sorry, this is one piece, this is one piece. They're independent, there's gonna be a seam right here. I think it'll be really hard to see because it's basically a high point from your viewpoint. So I don't think you'll see the seam. And then we got this guy right here. They can be 
moved around anywhere we want. So I'm, I'm basically treating this as an addition we can do later on. If we have a small screen or anything that it could be a driver aid right here, we can put that in there. Basically, just so you guys know right now, the game plan is that the Holly uh, with our, our, tr our transmission tunnel is, gonna, is right here. So we're gonna build a, a, a piece of steel that goes up to the, the dash right here. The Holly Pro EFI will go there. And then the switch panels to power the car are gonna go up here uh, between the roll cage and the roof. So I think this is a good game plan. I virtualized it out. I think it looks good. I guess I could uh, throw back the uh, original here so I don't know, man, what a epic 3D mess. This thing is a its pretty messy way of, um, whoa, don't hit that button. There we go, I got it fixed. It's a pretty messy way of uh, modeling these things out, but it does work to really get uh, perspective and size of a lot of these things. So I do think it's valuable, um, and that's why I bought another one that's going to be a lot better. So I think this is the game plan. Let's get to the shop and start to build it. All right, back in the automobile world, we figured out how we want to do the dash. So it's basically from this edge, going flat, single piece, filling up the width of this area from this bar here to this bar here, going flat across, and then right about here, it's gonna pitch down and connect in with that bar there. Nice, simple, clean, it should hide the edge as well. I think it's gonna look good. So we gotta go ahead and build a structure from that high point right here, see how it tilts down right here, from this point right here, across to its counterpoint matching up over there. So Oscar's gonna go ahead and we're gonna weld in a piece of round tube that'll have some brackets that can bolt into there because that's aluminum so we can't weld to it with steel. Oscar just wrapped up building in this bar right here, welding together this bar so you can see it's got the brackets and the bar runs across. The idea is for the dash to go from here to here to flat and back. Now the only problem that we just ran into that we kind of just realized is this is our roll cage foot pad right there. It has to have some pretty gnarly hardware. Move you guys around so you can see a little bit better. This has to have some really hardcore hardware stuck into it and uh, that means that we're going to have this plus a little bit of a bolt head which is going to build this surface up and it's too high to connect in with this. So we actually need to raise our new bar up a little bit um, about half the uh, width of the bar itself we're gonna raise it up that way our piece will go nice and flat down to the front of our dash section um, and straight to the bar and then we can go down so quick modification and then we'll have that main structural piece done all right bar has been modified you can see our all of our, our all of our stuff is just dead nuts parallel with each other we spent a lot of time leveling everything out and getting it all right now Originally, we thought we were gonna have to do two pieces because of the width of the, the back piece um, is really wide. But now that we're looking at it, we think we might be able to get away with one piece. And by one piece, what I mean is have the flat section here and then have a bend and have it connect down here. And we could bend right on this spot. So what we're gonna do is go find a cardboard box somewhere in our, in our recycling. And we're gonna cut a really long piece of cardboard that's gonna emulate what the aluminum would be. And then we're gonna try and shut like, slot it in here without um, without bending the cardboard at all to emulate like aluminum slotting in here. So we're just gonna give it a try and mock it up with cardboard. All right, cardboard dash gang. Uh, here's what we figured out. If we have these little side pieces on here, here and here, it is impossible to get this thing in and out of the car without bending it. And then we sat there and tried to figure out how we could do this a million different ways and Kyle was like, why don't we just cut this piece off and build it later? And I thought, that's really the way that we would actually like to do it in the long run. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. So basically, imagine this whole shape 
but it's go, it just goes straight back here. So it slides back, goes down, and then we're gonna build a custom piece that goes right here, and then we're gonna build another piece that goes over there and covers up some of that weirdness because it's got a lot of uneven edges, and if it was just basically a single bent piece like this, probably wouldn't cover up what we wanted to. So um, the next thing that we did was figured out our angle. So that's a 23 degree angle that the angle finder is on from our dash to our, our slope down. We found out the center of that bend, seven and a half inches down, that's where the center of the bend is gonna be, and then our overall dimension. So we grabbed a big piece of aluminum we've had sitting around the shop for many, many years. We're gonna go ahead and cut this up uh, to be the right width, and then we're gonna take it to the uh, commercial benders in the next city over, and they will bend it up for us, and then we can start actually trimming out the front section. All right guys, it's a new day, and first thing that we did uh, was go get this piece bent. So we got the piece bent. It was, what was it, 10 bucks to get bent? 25. 25 bucks to get bent, uh, but we got a nice, perfect bend at the right angle that we want. Now, because this thing bends basically up, uh, let's kind of test fit it in there and we'll show them what we mean. There we go, now I can show you what we mean. Because this arcs up and isn't just flat, when we first cut this piece and tested it, it was perfectly flat, it uh, slid right in there. But these have a slight angle up, and what that does is it makes it so the higher you get up, the narrower it is. So we gotta just lightly sand off a little bit of material right about here in the, in the crest of both of these sides. We'll sand, sand that off and it should just slide right in there. We got it fitting in here. It's looking fantastic. We're really happy with the shape and everything. Now we got to start working on trimming our edge. Um, this is going to be a very visible edge, so we want to get it really right. First, we're going to go ahead and just cut off this excess that'll allow it to lay flat. So we're going to cut there, cut there, lay it flat, and then we'll start figuring out our exact cut line. All right, with those trims, so it's not hitting the the. What are those bars? I don't, they're suspension component bars. They're not roll cage bars. Uh, so they're not, now that it's not hitting this, it sits a lot flatter. It's gonna sit even more flat once we cut it back off this edge. So Oscar's gonna go ahead and start templating this whole thing out. Oscar took this piece of cardboard right here and got the edge right, and then it was folded in half, so as you expand it, that is our dashboard template, and just you'll have to just trust me, it goes where we want it to go. So we transferred that over to the aluminum. It's time to cut it out. Oscar, make this as clean as you can. The dash is trimmed, it's cut, it's in, it looks fantastic. So this is exactly where we wanted it to lay and where we wanted it to follow. So right now there are some standoffs underneath here. Oh, I'm not gonna be able to lift this up here. That thing right there. Those are like stock Lamborghini little standoff clips and we're gonna utilize those. There's three of them and they'll, now we I, I broke it. Something like that. Anyways, so they're under here, 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 and here, and we want to utilize those to actually bolt into, just like how the stock Lamborghini dash does. So that's uh, why those are there, and that's where everything is where it is. So bolts in here, and then it's going to bolt in there. But before we do that, Oscar's going to build some more pieces. So he's going to go ahead and build a side piece that comes off of here and through there and to there to cover that area up so it looks a little bit more filled in. got the side pieces cut out and they didn't just they kind of just quite didn't turn out looking how we had hoped um, we can clean up this edge right here but we really can't make this match really nicely and then this edge is really hard and overall it's just an extremely hard piece to get in here and then there's a reality of once it goes in here the whole dash can't come out in any way 
ever again, which we, we don't want to do. So we're actually gonna scrap these and we're gonna, we've had a game plan to do some vent, like vent material um, that goes between here and here the whole time. So, cause the hood's gonna overlap this and it's gonna go up like this. Underneath that, often you have a cowl in a car. And so instead of having a cowl, we're gonna basically have like vent material uh, that'll, emulate what a cow would look like. So the vent material is gonna fill in this space coming through here, and then we're gonna use it to fill in this space right here as well. So it'll kind of be a strip. It's gonna go from there to there, through there, and then it's also gonna fill in this spot right here. So we're gonna scrap those pieces, and Oscar is gonna move on to the sides. And that's a piece that we're gonna make out of aluminum. So this piece of the car looks pretty cool. It's like the, the formed aluminum structure. We like the look of that, so we're not worried about that. So we're gonna start kind of at the crease here, come this way, missing that, come out to this edge over here, cover up this and through here. And then we'll figure out a way to cover this up some other time. I mean, it's not really a show car, but these are really pointy for a race car. Uh, we don't need stuff that's that pointy without some sort of a flat flat edge on it especially no spikes don't want any spikes so oscar's gonna work on those uh, those little guys right there Oscar's finished up building side dealies, side cover plates. So these have a little piece, the side plate itself has a little piece of aluminum that runs underneath here and sticks out down there. And then there's a hole in it there and there. And then we got a nut and a bolt through there. We um, will be getting different hardware. This hardware is a little large. We're gonna be getting some different, a little bit smaller, more low profile hardware, but that works really well. And that still allows the dash to come in and out of the car because of these pieces and their little bracketry underneath uh, bolt on afterwards as you can see because the dash is out of the car so all that's left now is we got to get it into the car and build some tabs like a little tab system across the front here so that'll come off of our, our bar our dash bar some tabs in the front and some tabs in the back to bolt this whole thing into the car All right, Oscar got the dash uh, like installed right where it's gonna go. So those, you saw those uh, three aluminum tabs, those high sp spots, drilled those out, put a rubber well nut in there, and then put our little button head screws because this is this is what we want to run on this thing in the long term. They're, they're just a little bit more low profile, uh, easier to kind of hide for the eye. So we got three of these in here and that's, that's holding this thing in back here exactly where it needs to be. And now it's time to get it buttoned down in the front. So you can see that uh, when we went and got this thing bent, even though we use like an industrial bender, kind of created a bow in here so we need we need to have some pressure to hold it down which is no problem so we're gonna do what are we doing Oscar three three tabs, three tabs that are gonna be uh, steel welded off of the dash bar uh, they're gonna go up they have a hole for the walnut to go through and then we'll put three bolts through that and it'll hold it nice and in place if you guys haven't guessed by now Kyle and I are off working on another episode we're trying to multitask a little bit so we're not jumping around the car too much and uh, we're, we're working on some really cool stuff it's been hard but it's really fun so you'll see that in the next episode The tabs are in, the bolts have been placed, and the dash is done. This is really cool. We went from a little 3D model that we took on the phone to visualizing it on the computer and building it out in real life in just two days. We are probably gonna do the little build up thing that I showed you guys on the computer that kind of goes up, flat, and down, but we definitely don't have enough time to do that now, but that's why we actually put this bolt here and there, is this will probably go straight through there and cover it up. We also have a, 
Uh, I think I mentioned this before, but we do have a uh, dashboard from Holly that is very, very large. The game plan is for that to go here, uh, but we could also maybe mount it um, maybe like here and coming up or something like that, like a little bit in between. And then we have a Garmin GPS that's gonna go over there for the passenger to navigate. So lots of good stuff is gonna be going in here, but first we had to get a nice solid structure and this is a really cool piece. Done. We're really trying to get all the steel and aluminum and metal work that we need to do on the build done so we can get the chassis painted and then we can start running the wiring and things like that that we need to do to uh, run the engine. So that's it for this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate the hell out of all you guys and I will see you on the next one. Peace.